Welcome to TV Recaps. Today I will be recapping an American dystopian drama. In a world facing a repopulation crisis, a patriarchal, totalitarian theocracy known as the Republic of Gilead has overthrown the United States government. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our channel. Please sit tight and enjoy the recap of the TV show, The Handmaid's Tale, Season 3. For recaps of Seasons 1 and 2, refer to link in description. Oh, and of course, spoilers ahead. The story opens with June chasing down Commander Joseph's car as it disappears into the darkness. She had just passed Nicole, her baby daughter, to Emily, a fellow handmaid, but did not get on the escape truck herself. Joseph, who arranged their escape, is shocked that June did not escape with her baby. She refuses to leave without her other daughter, Hannah, and gets Joseph to take her to Hannah's placement home, the Mackenzie's. Before June could grab her, she is recaptured by guardians and returned to the Waterfords. Fred, to protect the household, hides their involvement in Nicole's kidnapping and publicly pins the blame on Emily. Sometime later, June is reassigned to the Lawrence household, where she joins an underground resistance cell consisting of Beth and other Marthas. June, disguised as a Martha, helps them escort and drop off a runaway Martha in town. However, the escape attempt fails, and she later returns to the house with another wounded Martha. Joseph and his wife, Erlinor, help to distract guardians that are inspecting the house, while the others hide the wounded Martha. Despite their efforts, she dies and June spends the night burying her in the backyard. A commander's meeting is held at Joseph's house to discuss the insurgency in Chicago. While serving drinks, June is surprised to see Nick amongst them. He was recently promoted to commander and assigned to Chicago to fight the insurgency. Later at night, Joseph brings June to a warehouse, where hundreds of women are held in cages and bound for the colonies. However, Joseph gives June the chance to choose five of them to serve as Marthas. Though initially unwilling to be complicit in his crimes, June eventually chooses five Marthas who would make good recruits for the resistance. Meanwhile, Emily has successfully escaped to Canada with Nicole, where they are granted asylum. Nicole is taken into the care of Luke and Moira, while Emily reunites with her wife and son. After mass prayers, a few handmaids and Aunt Lydia were invited to attend a reception at the Putnam household. Janine, the Putnam's ex-handmaid, breaks decorum and pleads with them to invite her back so that she can produce another baby for them. Aunt Lydia flies into a rage and beats Janine until June throws herself between them. Ashamed of her actions, Aunt Lydia apologizes and privately breaks down in tears. Minutes later, the Waterfords receive video footage of Nicole with Luke, June's husband. Seeing Nicole safe in Luke's embrace, both Serena and June cry tears of joy. The Waterfords request June to arrange a short visit with Nicole so that they can get closure and move on. After a short but emotional phone call with June, Luke agrees to the meeting but only if Serena comes alone. For their meeting, Mark Tulo, a representative of the U.S. government in exile, is present as a mediator. Serena reassures Luke that June is safe and passes him a cassette tape from her. It contains a recorded message from June, confessing that Nicole was born out of love with Nick, the baby's real father. Luke allows Serena to hold the baby before they part. Mark renews his offer to help Serena escape Gilead, which she refuses again. He hides a satellite phone in her purse in case she changes her mind. Later, June is forced to participate in a televised broadcast with the Waterfords to pressure the Canadian government into returning Nicole. Serena has gone back on her pledge to set Nicole free and now wants her back in Gilead. As part of a media campaign, the Waterfords, Rita, and June travel to Washington, D.C. to participate in a televised mass prayer. They stay with the family of High Commander George Winslow and his wife Olivia. June is horrified to discover that handmaids in D.C. are forced to wear mouth rings to permanently silence them. Fred informs that the Swiss will be acting as diplomatic intermediary between Gilead and Canada. As part of negotiations, Swiss diplomats request to speak with June alone. June makes a deal to convince Nick to provide intelligence on Gilead. In return, they will ensure Nicole stays in Canada. However, they refuse to trust him upon learning that he was a soldier in the crusade. On the day of the mass prayer, huge contingents of handmaids gather around the Lincoln Memorial reflecting pool. June takes center stage and is forced to lead them in a televised prayer for Nicole's return. Back in Boston, June arranges with Frances, the Mackenzie's Martha, to visit Hannah at her school in Brookline, Massachusetts. June convinces Erlinor to accompany her to Brookline but are not permitted entry into the school. The strain proves too much for Erlinor, who becomes hysterical and returns home exhausted. 
The incident spooked the Mackenzies and they relocate. Their current whereabouts unknown to even Joseph. Afterwards, June participates in an execution where Francis and others are hanged. June finds out that her new walking partner, of Matthew, has been spying on her and reported Francis to Aunt Lydia. June furiously attacks her but is restrained by her fellow handmaids. Following the execution, of Matthew is ostracized by the other handmaids. In a ritual in which handmaids are admonished for their sins, June exposes off Matthew's doubts about carrying another baby to term. The bullying becomes too much to bear and she finally snaps. In the grocery store, she ferociously bludgeons Janine with a metal can and grabs a gun from a guardian. Of Matthew points her gun at Aunt Lydia but is gunned down before she could pull the trigger. Meanwhile, Fred and Serena renew their love for each other while negotiations take place to secure Nicole's return. Unbeknownst to Serena, George is planning to keep Nicole in Canada until they secure a general extradition treaty with them. Fred, tempted by George's offer of a position in D.C., agrees. After the shooting, Natalie is rendered brain dead and kept on life support until her baby is born. As punishment for orchestrating Natalie's bullying, June has been forced to pray on her knees in her hospital room for the past 32 days. As June's sanity deteriorates, she attempts to kill Natalie. Janine, hospitalized for her infected eye socket, stops June and is disappointed by her selfishness. Natalie's condition worsens and the doctors are forced to deliver her son prematurely by cesarean section. After the delivery, June is allowed to leave but chooses to remain with Natalie in her final moments. June apologizes for losing her way and makes Natalie a promise. I'm going to get out as many children as I can. Because Gilead should know how this feels. High Commander George Winslow visits Boston. Fred, keen to oust Joseph from power, convinces George that an example should be set with Joseph, who has had four handmaids and no children. On ceremony night, the Waterfords and George visit Joseph to oversee the process. June explains to Joseph and Erlenor that they must go through with the ceremony, or the entire household will be executed. After the deed is done, a doctor examines June and confirms that the ceremony is successful. Erlenor is traumatized by the events of the night. Later, June shares with Joseph her plans to smuggle children out of Gilead. Joseph agrees to help, in exchange for helping his wife escape. Beth has reached out to the Martha Network and received an overwhelmingly positive response for June's plan. A hiccup arises when Joseph realizes new authorizations are required to leave Gilead. June proposes a new escape plan using a plane instead of trucks. Joseph drives June to Jezebel's, where she enlists the help of Billy, the bartender, who will coordinate the plane ride out of Gilead. Unfortunately, as June is leaving, she bumps into George who tries to violate her. June fights back and kills him. June is dazed after the violent encounter until Martha enters the room. She reveals that she is one of the five women that June had saved from the colonies. The Martha helps her escape, removes all evidence of foul play, and cremates George's body. Next day, Serena confronts Fred for prioritizing his own ambitions over Nicole's recovery. She suggests contacting Mark on the satellite phone, making clear they could get Nicole back if they cooperate. They drive out to an abandoned gas station to secretly meet with Mark. Fred follows Mark's car to another location, not realizing he has driven into Canadian territory. As soon as he exits the car, Fred is swiftly arrested for the atrocities he has committed in Gilead. Serena reveals that she has betrayed Fred so that she could be with her daughter. In retaliation, Fred exposes crimes that Serena has committed which violates her immunity agreement with Mark. The forced impregnation of June by Nick so that she could claim the baby. Serena is immediately detained and Nicole taken away from her. Meanwhile, Olivia and Naomi visit Joseph to pray for George's safety, who they suspect has been kidnapped. Erlenor begins ranting incoherently, almost exposing June's plan. June screams at her. A clearly shaken Erlenor apologizes and retreats to her room. Later, June brings refreshments to Erlenor and discovers she has overdosed on her medicine. Believing she is a liability, June leaves the room quietly instead of calling for help. Erlenor is found dead the next morning and a funeral is held for her. Joseph is devastated and blames himself for her death. D-Day arrives. Hours before nightfall, a Martha brings a girl to the Lawrence household. The Martha loses her nerve and runs home but is caught on her way back, causing patrols to intensify in the region. Joseph demands to stop the operation, but June objects and overrides his orders. The number of children arriving at the house grossly exceeded their expectations. 
Janine joins them and informs June that guardians are searching every house for the missing children. Under cover of night and thick vegetation, they travel undetected to the outskirts of the airport. Unfortunately, their path is blocked by a guardian patrol. June, Martha's, and handmaids cause a distraction by throwing rocks at them while Rita and the children sneak aboard the airplane. June leads the guardian into the woods and kills him, but is wounded in the process. The plane lands, successfully liberating 86 children from Gilead and reuniting them with their real families. Morning arrives, June is still alive and rescued by her fellow handmaids. As she closes her eyes, she recites the words, I am come to deliver them from the hand of evil men to a land flowing with milk and honey. The end. Please stay tuned for the next TV recap. Comment below on what you liked or disliked about our video. Thank you for watching.